Great, yeah, thanks for the invitation to speak. Um, so my college roommate at Northwestern is a high school math teacher in Washington, D.C. And there, all the schools are closed, but he still gives these live lectures on Microsoft Teams. And all of his students have, have their videos off. And it was kind of a strange feeling for him. So he asked, like, oh, maybe you guys can turn your videos on. And then they did, and like one girl was wearing just like a shower cap, and there was like another boy where he had like the up the nose view, and Chris was like, "Oh, maybe that was a mistake," um, and he had, he said it, everyone can turn their cameras off. But 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 with that said, I will ask if if you're comfortable leaving your camera on, it might seem like more normal if if I can kind of see some faces. And the other thing is, feel free to ask questions in the middle, and if you're less Kind of comfortable you can wait until it's not recorded maybe let me quickly yeah. just add that we are yeah. gonna we were gonna cut the so if you keep the cameras on we are gonna cut um just you know the screen you're sharing at the moment so you will not be on the the recording which gets published so just to make that clear yeah great thanks for that that addition and with that maybe we'll get, we'll get started um so okay so here we go this is the plan uh, I'll start in the first section with some motivation, and it's going to come from homological mirror symmetry, some non-compact version. And that part will be very sketchy. I won't really give any definitions. Um, unless you already know the subject, you probably won't know what's going on. And then I'll go back and explain, like, okay, here's the polynomials I'm talking about, these invertible polynomials, and explain the classification, some other features. And then I'll associate a symmetry group that symmetry group to each of these polynomials, after which I'll define some matrix factorizations that are equivariant with respect to the symmetry group, and give a little kind of literature review of some other work that, that's been done. And then finally, I'll get to the main result, which I'll motivation, which is also kind of given in the title about these exceptional collections. Uh, Okay, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, so non-compact homological mirror symmetry. I'm gonna just explain kind of one proposal. And the proposal is, it, it's a duality with um, among Landau-Ginsburg models. So I'll have a function. And there will also be a group that on this side is a trivial group. And then um, over here will be called gamma w. And so, uh, yeah, these things are kind of to be defined, uh, but they're mirror. Uh, if there's an equivalence of categories. Between on the on this left side, some Foucault Seidel category, and then on the right side, an equivariant matrix factorization category. And so, especially the left side, this won't really be the focus of the talk. This is And roughly, this knows about um, intersection patterns of uh, vanishing cycles. And then over here, um, these matrix factorizations. Uh, and if you'd like, you can think of kind of the Sheafy version. So gamma W. Oops. Gamma W equivariant. Kind of singular sheaves. On, uh, on the inverse image of zero. Okay, and uh, one thing that maybe makes this difficult is that 
the, the notion of equivalence here is like is one of a infinity categories uh, and so one one kind of approach is you look inside each category and you just find some objects these will be some kind of collection of objects maybe collection of objects here and you always can get a map going to kind of the endomorphisms of the direct sum of these objects and maybe these are kind of modules or maybe dg modules you can do the same thing here Um, and if this collection you started with generates, if this generates the category, then you can get an equivalence and same over here. Um, and there's various work that's kind of done on, on both sides. So maybe, uh, you know, Seidel has a fair amount of work here, and often you can take like uh, what's called left shits symbols. Uh, yeah, and so he's got some work there. Then on the other side, there's kind of a, a fair amount of literature, kind of inspired maybe originally by Dickerhoff. And then there's work of uh, Polishak and Weintraub, and and also this work of uh, Ballard, Favero, Kutsarkov that I'll kind of I'll speak about more later. And in this setting, maybe it's a little more comp complicated to state, but you're kind of looking at skyscrapers at the origin if you're in kind of this this sheaf perspective so okay. and then you take various twists of this depending on your group so twist this Some things like this. Okay, and so that's kind of a fair amount of work done here. And in the, the dividends of the work is that then it suffices to give kind of an equivalence down here, which is maybe some kind of derived Merida equivalence, but at the, at the very least, is more something about um, infinity algebras. And so you achieve a simplification kind of coming coming down um, to the second row. Uh, but but in, in really nice cases, um, say if these algebras like are, are formal, then uh, you can pass to the homology instead. And then you can kind of take honest to God modules and do the same thing over here in the formal case. And then well, I, that that by a very drastic simplification that you're more you're just saying something about algebras here. Um, a particular kind of nice sub situation of of this formality is that sometimes you go to take this endomorphism algebra and you just honest to God get an algebra. Um, and so, so now I'll kind of 
maybe zoom out a little bit and ask a question. So, what conditions can we put on this collection of MJ? Um, to kind of to be in this uh, equality situation in the pink case. And so just a quick definition. Um, this collection is an exceptional collection, which implies on the direct sum that it's tilted. Uh, basically, you need a vanishing of a bunch of homes. So let me kind of write it as one statement. So when I look when I look at homes from MI to MJ shifted by N, well, there will be three different cases depending on how I and J are related. If I equals J and N is zero, there's an identity map. There's scalars of that, but I want a vanishing result that there's no other maps. I'll just get scalars of the identity on MI. If I is greater than J, um, then I want all of these homes just to vanish and be zero. And now, uh, I, I'm in the strong setting, so it's it's further a strong exceptional collection. If the homes in the forward direction, so to speak, are just concentrated in degree zero. And so everything where MJ is shift is zero, and I just get um, kind of zero degree homes. I didn't say this when I was setting up the de definition, but implicitly I've ordered these objects. That's an important part of this statement. Uh, and so you, you can imagine this is desirable to have such a, a strong exceptional collection. And so that's uh, the main result for today. I forgot how to spell. So this is everything I'm going to talk about uh, that's kind of my, our, my work is joint with David Favero and with Tyler Kelly, who will be speaking here next week. Um, and the result is that if I have um, this category, this has uh, an exceptional collection for W, what's called an invertible polynomial. <clears throat> um, going back to this kind of top line here, I should say that this collection also generates. Um, so it's, it's what's called full. Um, and what I'll need to use I'll need to use full exceptional collection a lot today, so I'll just abbreviate it as FEC. Um, and then there's kind of a but. Uh, these, this is not necessarily strong. I guess I'm, I'm kind of not sure we haven't checked it, uh, but, but uh, we have it in some case some cases. Um, Strong in the Gorenstein case. Okay, so so this main result motivated kind of from mirror symmetry is what we'll do today, and um, the next section of the talk too on invertible polynomials will just tell you what that W is. Then in section three, I'll tell you what the group is. 
In section four, describe the category. And then in section five, I'll explain the result. So this is the plan for what we're going to do. OK, questions up until this point. OK, so let's let's jump in. Sorry, Dan. Yeah. Can I, so I, I didn't quite understand the difference between the purple and the pink uh, isomorphisms when you went previously. Oh. Is it just that the differential vanishes or something? It was basically, um, the the formal case, I have some DG that's quasi isomorphic to its homology. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the content being like as actual algebras. And then the pink case was that I go to produce what I kind of think is a DG algebra, and then I just get like an honest to God algebra. So the differential so, just vanishes. Yeah, the, the differential just kind of vanishes automatically. I see. OK. The, and then, yeah. And then, are you saying that having a strong exceptional collection implies star? Is that the? Oh yeah, sorry. The the, the star was. Um, yeah, the star was that. And did did you answer that question that you wrote there? Is that the is that the definition that you gave afterwards? Oh, yeah, sorry, exactly. just, so then, no, no, I yeah. just I I'm you know I don't know anything so. I, <laughs> No, yeah, let's let's make it more explicit. So yeah, so sorry, the yeah, the answer uh what the answer was supposed to be this. And so uh, okay. yeah, answer. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, is that better? Are there other questions? Time. Okay. Okay, so now we'll um, now we'll go to a world where I define things carefully uh, and kind of explain what I mean. So an invertible polynomial. So the definition, I'll have W polynomial and N variables. Uh, it's invertible if W has this specific form, or it's going to be a sum of uh, n monomials and n variables. Like that. And further, if I look at this matrix that has all of these AIJs, um, the entries are integers, but I can re regard them as rational numbers, and then I want this to be invertible. Okay, and then 2w is quasi homogeneous. Uh, so what does this mean? There exists these Q1 and QN, these I'll call weights. And then there is a, a D, a degree, such that this sum So a priori, this depends on I, but I'm saying it's just this constant D for all I. Um, these weights are, these weights should be positive and D is positive. The, so the, the idea here is that I'm just viewing uh, XI as being in degree uh, QI and then W is just now kind of weighted homogeneous. Degree D. Okay. Third condition W is quasi smooth. Uh, so it's not quite smooth. It will have a singular locus. That singular locus will just be the origin. Okay, so isolated singularity at the origin. And so maybe we'll just quickly see one or two examples and non-examples, and then we'll go to the classic. 
Um, and so let's just do these in two variables to make everything very. Let's take. Okay, so let's play the game. So is this one invertible or not invertible? So the, the issue if people were able to find it was that this term dominates. So there's no weights I can put on it uh, to make it quasi homogeneous. Right, so that, that's a barrier for two holding. Um, Um, okay. What else? This one works. This Q1, uh, Q, sorry, Q. is take two polynomials. No. Okay, so Um, yeah. 
of atoms, one. of this form. the origin W that's also a polynomial.
when I cover this guy up, it's the chain. For Ma, or really the way of defining. Because you raised your hand now several times. then that's going to give W prime. the one variable situation. As I'm expanding and taking this one exceptional class. Okay, so with this,
they compare with the product of the two groups. This will maybe be Is kind of saying maybe I'll But like, I'm gluing that second matrix factor.
polynomial algebra and say, And these, these maps compose these identities are on different spaces. So This definition is incredibly precise in these maps. one by one. And so let's matrix factorizations. Try to find a map back. You can't. There aren't any. But I'll.
found a derived category of representations. Chuck Weintraub. Our version is is
going back. So this is a theorem. Elementary. here and then we looked at it more carefully and got collection up there thank you for listening